Hello, my name is Mike Chen, and I'm a Solutions Engineer in Cisco's Contact Center Business Unit. And I'd like to welcome you to the Appendix A VOD for the Cisco Live Breakout Session 3004, which we covered CCE and CVP fault tolerant design. Now, the Cisco Agent Desktop, or CAD, is comprised of five base services, or sometimes referred to as managed services. One of the core critical services is the LRM, which is the License Resource Manager. And just as the name implies, it's responsible for metering licenses, but it also controls failover. The next service we have is called Chat. And the Chat service's primary role is to be the communications broker between your agents and supervisor. However, it plays a very central role for your supervisor agent desktops because it is the only mechanism and means of delivering real-time interaction to the CSD, or supervisor desktop. And this is because the supervisor desktop is not natively CTI enabled, so it must connect and rely on chat to serve up pretty much all of its functionality. The next service we have is something called the Enterprise Service. And when you think about the Enterprise Service, just think about the screen pop interaction that you have with your CTI desktop. This Enterprise Service basically provides the uh, call tracking in terms of history, caller ID, uh, and of course the population of the ECC variables. We have another service called the RASCAL Service, which stands for Recording Agent Statistics and Call Activity Log. And when you think of Rascal, you should be thinking of database. This is where the CAD information or historical information is, is stored. So your daily, weekly, historical stats for your agents is all stored in Rascal or in the Rascal database. And the last service we have is something called a sync service. And this service's primary role is to sync the integrated objects between CCE and CAD when it comes to the agent config, the workflow, etc., and to keep those objects in sync between the two uh, entities. And while this is not a service, um, it is also important to uh, just call out the LDAP because the LDAP is really the uh, centralized configuration store for anything that's CAD related. And there are certain services like the sync service that interacts directly with the LDAP. And we'll take a look at all of these and how they break down in the next coming slides. Now here's a visual representation of the LRM service when compared to the other base services operating within CAD. If you recall earlier in the session, it looks a lot similar to the MDS process within CCE. And like the MDS process, all other base services within CAD has to register to the LRM. Now the LRM service runs in what we call hosted versus non-hosted status between both of your CAD server sides. What this basically means is that LRM doesn't have the concept of active versus idle or active versus inactive. Instead, LRM does run active-active between the two sides. However, only one side or one LRM is hosting all of the active base service connections. Now, while its primary role is to manage and distribute licenses across all of your CAD components and clients, one of the critical roles that it does play in the area of fault tolerance is that it manages and initiates CAD based services failover. And what we mean by that is that CAD doesn't have the ability to autonomously fail over just a single service within the base service set. What it has to do is it has to rely on LRM to basically keep constant watch and check across all of the base services. And if one, only one, of the base services exhibits a condition that triggers a threshold within LRM, it will invoke failover across all of the base services. So in other words, all services, all base services have to align and failover with each other. So it does this by receiving heartbeats every 30 seconds across all of the subcomponents or base services. And what it will do is it'll send an acknowledgement of the heartbeat to the respective service and wait five seconds for a response. If it misses two heartbeat acknowledgments or if one of the services fails to send heartbeats within a five minute window, 
it will determine that that particular service is unreachable and it will start to initiate its recovery for that particular service. Now, the recovery is not a failover. What it will do is it, if it if the socket is open, for example, it will close that socket and reinitiate and reestablish that connection. However, it will do this for only three minutes. And within that three minute window, if it cannot successfully recover that particular session, then it will initiate a full base services failover to the other side. Similarly, three consecutive sub component failures will also trigger a failover if it happens within a three minute window. So for example, if you have the enterprise service and that service is bouncing or cycling periodically, if it does this three consecutive times within a three minute window, it will trigger LRM to pretty much fail over the entire base services to the other side. And if you look at the LRM service log, you can see how this interaction works and how LRM pretty much controls who is active and who is not active between your two CAD server sides. So in review, the interaction for the LRM is that all of your CAD services has to register with it. And it also maintains heartbeats across all of your CAD services, including the desktops and CSD, through the interaction of the chat service. It is the primary and core fault tolerance engine for CAD services. Now the next service that we're going to take a look at is called the chat service. And as you can see by this visual representation, when your agents log in, it will have two connection endpoints. One is to the PG services or CTIOS, and the other is to the CAD services through chat. Now, if your supervisor is logging in, your supervisor obviously wouldn't connect to any of the PG or CTI service. Rather, your supervisor will only initiate a connection into the chat service. So as mentioned earlier, one of the roles that the chat service performs is that it is the primary uh, service broker for your CSD, which is your supervisor desktop. Again, your CSD is not directly CTI enabled, and being that's the case, it must rely on the chat service to basically provide all of its functionality. Now, the chat service also brokers messages between your agent and supervisor desktops. It runs as a service called the FCC server.exe, which stands for Fast Call Chat Server.exe. And the way it, it runs is that on your CAD servers, it will run this exe on the active side of the server. However, on your client, and the client meaning the supervisor and the agent desktops, it will also run in the background this same exe. So pretty much these two EXEs between server and client will connect and talk to each other. And it's responsible for uh, basically managing messages between agent and supervisor when it comes to the login state of agents, the activity of the calls, um, brokering chats between agent and supervisors, as well as uh, team messages. Whenever barge in, intercept, and recording requests uh, come through by the supervisor, it is also being managed and tracked through chat. And it's responsible for supervisor, supervisor workflow event notifications. And it gets this information through the enterprise server. And when it comes to the fault tolerance control through the CAD LRM, the chat servers will operate in an active versus standby mode. Now the enterprise service, as you can see by this visual representation, not only does it connect to the LRM, but it also makes a connection out to CTI server on your peripheral gateway. And the reason it needs to connect to CTI server is simply for system call tracking. The enterprise service is responsible for basically keeping a historical call log of all of the calls that the agent performs. And that includes like the duration of each call. It also provides any sort of IVR collected data and screen pop information through ECCs, and it sends that information to the agent desktop. When it comes to the fault tolerance control through LRM, the enterprise service operates in an active versus standby mode. All right, now let's take a look at the recording and statistics service, or better known as Rascal. As you can see here, one of the key things with Rascal is that it does 
maintain and operate a local database on your CAD server. And it also makes a connection out to your administrative workstation or aw hds. Now when you think of Rascal, what you want to think of is database. And specifically, the CAD database contains two sets of information. One is a daily statistical snapshot and the other one is a seven-day historical snapshot of your agent and team statistics. So example, your average agent state time, the last time the agent logged in, the number of calls the agent received, all of that is contained within the CAD database. And for the daily statistical information, it's only stored on a 24-hour cycle. So at midnight, on each day, it resets those counters back to zero. And if you're running any sort of recording capabilities within CAD, it also supports those as well. Now, if you noticed earlier, it did make a connection out to the administrative workstation on the CCE side. And the reason it needs this ODBC connection is simply because for certain statistical information related to your agents and calls, it simply cannot generate on its own. It needs to leverage some of the reporting capabilities within CCE. One of them is the ASA, or the average speed of answer. And this data is contained within your CSD team skills report. It is also, just in general terms, RASCO is responsible for keeping the, the statistical database in sync on the CAD side. So whatever statistics is generated locally on CAD versus what statistics are tracked within CCE, it has to kind of broker all of this and keep it in sync and relevant on the CAD side. Now I know what you're probably thinking when it comes to the database. You're thinking, well, Mike, you showed me earlier that there's a database running on both sides of my CAD server. However, the Rascal service operates in an active versus non-active or hot standby mode. So how does it keep the data in sync at all times? Well, the simple answer is it leverages SQL or MDSE snapshot replication. So if you notice, in your design or actually in your CAD server, you have something called a CRA distribution database. That CRA database is basically a holding point for your data and it allows SQL snapshot replication to basically snapshot and replicate that data over to the two um, Rascal databases. Okay, I'd like to pause for a minute here and discuss a recent change that went into CAD version 8.0. Specifically, this change directly impacts the way the database is kept in sync and how data is recorded into the CAD Rascal database. Previously, before 8.0, the standard and default was MDSE. You didn't need a license, you didn't need to purchase anything, it was out there for free. And CAD leveraged this simply because it freed Rascal from having to do any sort of replication between the two sides. Rather, it used the SQL snapshot, snapshot replication to keep the two sides of the database in sync. And it was also easy to back up and restore. Now, by the time 8.0 came out, MDSE was no longer free, and FlatFile was the default option simply because flat files are free. And flat files are basically nothing more than plain or mixed text binary files used for simple record storage. However, the introduction of the flat file and the fact that it is the default option unless you buy SQL licenses and install SQL in your environment, the flat files do not replicate on its own. Rather, this required Rascal now to operate in an active and passive mode, whereas both Rascal services are pretty much exchanging statistical information between themselves and the passive Rascal service on the other side is now responsible for writing to and updating its flat file database. Now there's a caveat to this and that is, and we've seen this out there in the field, if for example you have a condition where the Rascal database goes down or becomes unavailable on the passive side, if this extended outage lasts for more than 30 minutes there is a good chance that your reporting data will have a gap or a hole. The simple fact is, is that the flat file is not as flexible as an MSDE database. And the design of the flat file is not optimized for database synchronization. So what does this all mean? 
you really seriously want to consider buying SQL licenses. Okay, so finally, what I like to do is talk about the Sync and Directory Services, or LDAP. And as you can see, the Sync service makes three connections. One to the call manager, one to the CCE database, and another one directly to Directory Services. And we'll take a look at exactly why these connections are made and what purpose do they serve. Now we'll start by taking a look at the Sync service, followed by the Directory Services. Now, the sync service's primary role is to sync the LDAP information with the CCE config information. So, for example, any changes made to the agent, supervisor, team, or skills in CCE has to be mapped over to the CAD side as well, and specifically in the CAD LDAP, because this is where the integrated objects are kept for CAD utilization. So, the sync services does this by way of providing a 10-minute cyclic sync between the AW database and the CAD LDAP. It also provides an on-demand sync via the CAD administrator. So for those of us who have done this manual sync in the CAD desktop, it leverages the sync service to do this. Now the direct interaction, of course, is ODBC from CAD to CCE. And in the older versions before 7.0, it would connect directly to the logger database to get this configuration information. However, after 7.0, it now connects to the AW database to get this configuration. However, after 7.0, it now gets this information directly from the AW database. It will only perform read-only interactions with the CCE database. Now, if you noticed earlier, it also made a connection to the call manager. And the reason why it needs to have this connection into call manager is simply because if you're leveraging recording or monitoring in your environment, it needs to make the MAC and extension associations for your agent devices. And it does this directly through the Axle connection to Call Manager. And whether it's keeping the data in sync via Rascal or if it's synchronizing directory services, hence LDAP, it does this by way of either an ODBC connection or a CORBA connection if we're talking about LDAP. And finally, let's talk about directory services or LDAP. And as we all know by now, CAD uses Open LDAP for its main system configuration repository. Basically, all CAD-related configuration information and objects is stored in the LDAP database. When it comes to LDAP, there's two primary services that's managed through directory services that makes the LDAP available. One is SLAPD and the other is SLURPD. When it comes to monitoring the state of the LDAP, that is the sole responsibility of SLAPD or SLAPD.exe. It needs to ensure that the LDAP is always up and running and available. Otherwise, if the LDAP is not available, none of your agents will be able to log in. And the SLURPD process is simply responsible for the back-end synchronization of the LDAP database. So, in summary, the LRM not only controls and meters licenses for your CAD environment, but it also controls failover. It is the decider. It determines when and how services will fail over between your two CAD servers. You also have an LDAP database, and this is where all of your configuration objects and integration objects that are CAD-based and CAD-related is stored. And you also have a database, which previously, before 8.0, was a SQL MDSE database. This is where your historical statistics and daily statistics are stored, or the RASCAL database. With 8.0 and higher, we no longer ship with MSDE as the default. It is now flat files. Now when it comes to flat files, it is not designed to be a high availability solution around synchronization. So in your environment, if you are currently running flat files, what you may want to consider is to upgrade to SQL. And there is a very straightforward migration path to migrate from flat files to a full SQL server or a SQL database. Thank you for your time on this VOD.